the last few times I've been in a gym with a coach or watching a practice, uh, coaches seem really adamant that players do something specific before practice starts. So it's almost like if practice is at 7 p.m., uh, really practice starts at 6.45 because the coach has drills organized um, before the practice time starts. Um, and while I can understand why this is used, you know, to get extra repetitions and uh, to have players doing something quote-unquote productive, um, I also think that we're missing some of the point of why uh, children are playing sports. Um, for a lot of the players, I think the time before and after practice has a lot to do with why they're out there. Uh, both the, the social aspects of just playing around with friends and shooting around, and then the fun of, you know, hucking up bad shots or trying something new or, uh, you know, playing one-on-one -on -one or playing two-on-two. -two. And I just don't think that these are such negative activities that we need to um, restrict them. So, uh, you know, for instance, you know, last time I was in a gym, you know, the coach looked around and was like, I just don't like this. Um, go get them organized in something, you know, and it was 20 minutes before, you know, we were supposed to start. So, you know, if we were going to start at, you know, 630, you know, instead of at seven, why not just tell everybody to be there at 630 and then we'll start practice then instead of, uh, you know, restricting that 20 minutes of free play. You know, and when I looked around, you know, a couple people were shooting threes, you know, there was a game of two on two going on, uh, you know, there was a game of, um, you know, horse going on so you know are these really negative activities that you know it's gonna you know in some way hinder the players to be participating in these things I don't think so however I do think that if you take away some of the fun of being on a team and and playing a sport I think that can have negative repercussions because for most of these players you know they're gonna start a practice and the practice is gonna be uh, you know typically not necessarily what they're looking for. The lack of playing, lots of block drills, uh, lack of exploration. So it's really restricting what a player is able to do. So the only time that they have that they can really expand and experiment and explore different movements or different skills is that you know time when they get dropped off to when practice starts. And when we're turning that into more drills um, and restricting their options even more, then not only are we uh, hurting some avenues of skill development um, in terms of exploration uh, and variability, uh, but we're also taking away some of the fun, um, and especially some of the social fun. So, you know, showing up and just hanging out with my buddy who I may or may not see that much outside of practice. You know, maybe, you know, we live in na different neighborhoods or we go to different schools, and so we show up for practice, you know, and we're cool, but, you know, outside of, you know, games and practices and stuff, we don't see each other that often. So, you know, that 15, 20 minutes of playing one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -on -two, um, you know, or just hanging out, talking, um, whatever, uh, you know, I just don't see it as a negative, and I don't th see it as something that coaches need to disrupt. Personally, for me, uh, you know, that's the player's time. Um, you know, when practice starts, that's my time, and I'm going to organize the activities. But when I open the gym and I tell them, hey, you know, gym's open a half hour before practice, um, I'm not going to be there directing the activities. Again, it's their time, you know, and if they want my help, if they, hey, can you show me something or, you know, I need to work on this, can you give me a drill or can you, you know, can you watch my shot? By all means, I'm going to help them. Um, but I don't want to interfere because I want them to have that time. And so I think sometimes we get caught up in trying to be so serious and training so hard and we forget that for the vast majority of players, they're in it for the fun. They're never going to reach a really high level anyway. And so the 10 shots that they huck up at the basket or the game of crappy two-on-two -two at the beginning where they're, you know, trying too many moves or whatever, it's not going to make them a worse player. And it may actually make them a better player because of the adaptability, the variability, uh, you know, and the exploration that it affords.